I. Welcome to the next section, clustering. In this section, we will understand about clustering and k-means clustering. Now we move on to the first video of this section, understanding clustering. In this video, we are going to first learn about clustering and then perform internal clustering evaluation. Clustering is quite unique and comes with its own set of terms. In order to cluster data points together, we need to define and utilize some distance or similarity that quantitatively defines the closeness between data points. Choosing this measure is an essential part of every clustering project because it directly influences how the clusters are generated. Clusters resulting from the use of one similarity measure might be very different from those resulting from the use of another similarity measure. The most common and simple of these distance measures is the Euclidean distance, or the squared Euclidean distance. This is simply the straight line distance between two data points in your space of features. However, there are a whole host of other, sometimes more complicated, distance metrics. For our purposes here, we will mostly stick to the Euclidean distance. So here we have created an example and its corresponding file. This distance is implemented using GoNumFloats package via the distance function. Here we calculate the distance between a point at 1, 2 and a point at 3, 4. Let us build and run this code. We get the distance as 2.83. We need to know how well our clustering is performing. For that, we now introduce internal clustering evaluation metrics. If we do not have a gold standard set of labels for our clusters for comparison, we are stuck with evaluating how well our clustering technique performs using internal criteria. In other words, we can still evaluate our clustering by making similarity and dissimilarity measurements within the clusters themselves. The first of these internal metrics that we will present here is called the silhouette coefficient. The silhouette coefficient can be calculated for each clustered data point as follows. Here, A is the mean distance between a data point and all other points in the same cluster, and B is the mean distance between a data point and all other points in the cluster nearest to the data point's cluster. The average of this silhouette coefficient for all data points represents how tightly packed the points are in each cluster. This average could be taken per cluster or for data points in all clusters. For this, we have created our example 1 in evaluating folder. In order to calculate the silhouette coefficient, we need to know the centroids of the three clusters. For that, we have defined a type for our centroids. Then we can create a map that contains the centroid for each of our iris flower species using Kneeren slash Gota slash DataFrame package. Let's dissect the main function. Here we pull the CSV file and create a data frame. Then we define names of the three separate species contained in the CSV file. We then filter the dataset into three separate data frames, each corresponding to one of the iris species and filter the original dataset. Here we calculate the mean of features and put each dimension's mean into the corresponding centroid. After this, we skip the irrelevant columns and add this centroid to our map. Finally, we output our centroid. Compiling and running the code gives us our centroids. Next, we need to actually calculate the silhouette coefficients for each data point. For this, we have created example 2. Here we have just modified example 1 code such that we have access to each filtered set of data points outside of the for loop. Here we create a map to hold the filtered data frame for each cluster. Then we filter the data set into three separate data frames and each corresponds to one of the iris species. And finally, we add the filtered data frame to the map of clusters. Let's also create a convenience function to retrieve floats values from a row in a data frame. Dot data frame. For this, we have used df float row, and this retrieves a slice of float values from a data frame at the given index and for the given column names. We can now loop over our records, calculating the a and b that we need for the silhouette coefficients. For this, we convert our labels into a slice of strings and create a slice of float column names for convenience. And then average the silhouette coefficients to get an overall evaluation metric for our clusters. Here we loop over the records. A will store our accumulated value for A, 
and we will loop over the data points in the same cluster and get the data point for comparison. This line is used to add this data point to A and determine the nearest other cluster. We will then skip the cluster containing the data point and this code is used to skip the cluster containing the data point. Here we calculate the distance to the cluster from the current cluster and replace the current cluster if relevant. This line is used to store our accumulated value for B and we then loop over the data points in the nearest other cluster. We then get the data point for comparison. We then add this data point to B. Finally, we add this to the average silhouette coefficient and output the final average silhouette coefficient. Compiling and running this example yields the average silhouette coefficient value as 0.51. How do we know if 0.51 is a good or bad average silhouette coefficient? Well, remember that the silhouette coefficient is proportional to the difference between mean intracluster distances and mean intercluster distances, and is always going to be somewhere between 0.0 and 1.0.